But Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 7. Verse 7 says, O Lord, thou hast deceived me. And I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried thou to spoil. Because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Skip down to verse 14. And look at what he says here. He said, Curse be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be the blessed. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew, and repented not, and let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noontime. Because he slew me not from the womb, well, that my mother might have been grave, and her womb to be always great with me. Wherefore, Wherefore came I forth out of the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame? I want to say to you before I go further the message, I so often tell you in Bible class, Bible study, that the Bible is not written in chronological order. Verses 14 through 18 are actually uh, reflecting the attitude and feelings of Jeremiah earlier in the chapter. Uh, earlier when he said in verse 7, O oh Lord, thou hast deceived me. And I was deceived. Because you may notice in verse 10, it looked like he comes to some deliverance. And on no, verse 9 it is, when he talked about the fire that shut up in his bones. And then if you were to read verse 13, you see the deliverance again. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of the evil doer. But then you go to verse 14. Curse be the day wherein I was born. He's so upset. So he wants the day that he was born to be cursed. That scripture and the following scriptures, perhaps, if it were going to be chronological, uh, should have been included between verses 7 and 9. So I want to use for a subject today because somebody needs to hear this word today. I want to talk to you from the subject, have you felt like giving up lately? Come on, look at your neighbor and ask them that question. Have you felt like giving up lately? Now some of you have heard me preach this before, but I promise you this is a brand new message. I didn't even look at the notes when I preached this a few years ago. Because the Lord gave this message to me a little differently on this time. But have you felt like giving up lately? There are some church members. There are someone that's even here today perhaps. Uh, who perhaps is at a breaking point. Say amen somebody. Amen. They are just about to give up on themselves. They are thinking about giving up on the church. And more importantly, they are thinking about giving up on God. Within their minds, or possibly audibly, they are saying, I just can't go on anymore. Can't make it. Even though I tried so hard, I, I, I just can't see myself making it. It's hopeless. So they would say within themselves, why try? Why try? Let me ask this question to you. Why do we feel this way sometimes? Why do we feel like giving up? <laughs> Some reason, there are days we act as if God has forsaken the earth. Now, we don't doubt his existence, but our prayers seem to go unanswered. Anybody ever been there before? You have prayed. Oh, you were like Hannah 
in, in, in that recorded, her story is recorded in, in 1 Samuel. Hannah poured out her soul. I mean, she just let it come out. And somebody here today, you have poured out your soul. But yet your prayers have gone unanswered. Say amen. amen. We struggle. And, and uh, there's somebody here today, you've been struggling and look like uh, you failed to reach the goal that you're trying to reach. I think sometimes young people need to hear this because of what they may be facing in school. Some of those subjects are not so easy. Amen. Now come on, say amen. Amen, Pastor. The toughest class I had in high school was physics. Yes. And it was in my it was in my own father's class. My dad taught me physics. And I want y'all to know something. He gave me no mercy because I was a suffering. The children would tell me, say, you in the house, he making the test, and how won't you steal the test? <laughs> and look at the test and give us it. I don't understand. I'm thinking, y'all are crazy. <laughs> Think I'm going to try to steal his test. Right. Then I told him, I said, there's no need to be steal the test, because he can make out three different tests. Uh, he had three different tests, and, and then decide on the day of the test which one he's going to give. And then you couldn't just put the answer down there. You had to work no problems down. Because if you just put the answer down there, you got a big red X if you couldn't see how you worked it out. Say that. Amen. So, sometimes we have, even for those that are younger, have those obstacles in front. Yes. Tough teacher. Tough professor. Yes. And the thought is, I just can't see my way out of here, so why don't I just give up? It may be somebody here today, you have made some promises to yourself. You made promises to do better. You made promises to read your Bible, to pray every day. I'm going to see what I can do to, to help. I'm going to work in the church. But after doing all of that, you are yet left with an empty, unfulfilled feeling. Then doubt creeps in, and the devil whispers, nothing is working. Well, when I look at uh, some of the causes and some of the feelings, I begin to think about the man Job. I'm going to come back to the text and talk about Job, but I begin to think about Job. Job really wanted to give up. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm not going to go through the story of Job, because most of you know, but just in case somebody uh, does not know about Job, let me briefly tell you that he lost all his wealth. The Bible says he was the richest man in the East. He lost all his money. He had ten children. All ten of them were killed, perhaps instantly, in a windstorm when a wall collapsed on them. He became very sick, sick unto death, great pain. His wife turned her back on him. And his friends falsely accused him. Now listen to it. Job felt all alone. Job felt forsaken. Perhaps even forsaken by God himself. Because Job said in Job 23 and 8, Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. I go backwards, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hired himself on the right hand. That I cannot see him. Job said he had himself. Lord, where are you? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody here today, uh, you've gone through some things. You've had some trauma in your life. And it looked like God is nowhere close. God, where were you when this happened to me? Where are you? When the trouble occurred, somebody say amen. amen. Come on, everybody, say amen. amen. Joel was saying to himself, really, I know God is there someplace. Uh, looking down on me and all my trouble, he knows the way I take. But in spite of all that I do to find him, he keeps hiding from me. He's there, but I just can't see him. And in total desperation, Joel, no doubt, started crying. 
He says in verse 15 of the same chapter, chapter 23, I am afraid of him. Because he was saying it looked like the torture, the torment itself may be coming from God. And I am afraid of him. Now none of you today, y'all still here? Amen. None of you today can perhaps testify that you've had it as bad as Job had it. But you might be able to relate to some of the feelings that Job felt. Oh, yeah. Job had family trouble. Yeah. Yes. Is anybody, you don't have to raise your hand, but has anybody in here ever had family trouble before? Yeah. Yes. Job lost all ten of his children, as I said earlier. And some of you today, my heart really grieves at times when I see mothers particularly that are crying because of what is going on with their child. Job lost his children. Thank you, Jesus. And today, it may, it may be that your child has not died physically. But yet, the child is dead. What, what do I mean by that? You see, death in the Bible really means separation. If you look at James 2 and 26, it says that the body without the spirit is dead. When a person dies. The spirit man that consists of the spirit and soul, it separates from the physical man. And it goes on uh, to his eternal home. There's a separation. And some of you today, your, your children really are dead to you because you are separated from them. Oh, somebody ought to say amen. amen. Sometimes the separation is, is in part because of drug issues. You know you have taught the child, right? You know you pray for the child, but the child, and so glad for Sister Angelisa talking today about the fact that you can get with the wrong crowd. That's good for you to tell folks and, oh, yes. and, and let them see. Yes, you can get with the wrong folks. Some of you who are here today as mothers and fathers, you're going through some things because the child has, has gotten with the wrong folks and now have gotten hooked on drugs and hooked on alcohol. Say amen, somebody. And, and because of their behavior, the behavior has changed. Look like they don't, they're not paying you any attention. Yes. Separation between you and the child, between you and the son, between you and the mother. Come on, y'all. Say that to me. Behavior has changed because of who they're hanging out with. And sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes it's because of the girlfriend. Because of the boyfriend. Yes. And because, y'all listen to me here, because that child has crossed that line. Uh-oh. Y'all know what line I'm talking about. Come on, y'all. Because a soul tie has been produced. I need to preach about that again. Soul tie. Because sex is not just a physical thing. It is also emotional. It is also spiritual. That's why even Jesus said that, that uh, you know, you ought to plead to your wife. That would be separation from the parent, but there is something even there that is even sexually in that scripture about cleaving to the wife. Come on. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. Come on, say amen. Amen. Look like when, when little Sally, amen, that got hooked up with that. That, that bad fella down the street that's sagging his hands won't comb his hair. Won't work and won't go to school. She's been nice all her life, but now she has an attitude. Oh yeah. Now she's sassy. Y'all ought to have to preach here. Oh yeah. Saying all that's because there's a soul tap. Something spiritual has taken place. Come on, y'all. Say amen, everybody. Now the relationship. Is dead. And it's troubling somebody here today. That's right. Lift your hands and say, Lord, help me. Come on, everybody. Say, Lord, help me. Job not only lost his children, but his wife turned her back on him. Job got sick, and his wife had the nerve to tell him, Curse God and die. That's Job and his wife. That's Job when he was in the good day. Had all his money. But when Job got sick, she turned her back. Job ain't got no money now. Job can't take her to stand Mark. Take her to Mason. Come on, y'all. Job can't put the roast on the table now. The steak. 
He's sick. Yeah. Eventually. Lost everything. Go to the next slide. And perhaps this is how Job looked. Sores began to break out over all of his body. That's what the scripture tells you. There's Job's wife telling Job to just cuss God and die. You know who? Can you, can you feel how Job must have been feeling? The anguish. Children died. I lost all my money. And look like my wife ought to help me. Amen. But my wife is tired of me. Oh, come on, say amen. amen. Can I talk to you for a few minutes? Amen. I'm watching the clock because I got to get through this. But let me tell y'all something. If you're saved, the devil understands something. He understands that if you're really saved, he can't really come at you so much with drinking, perhaps. Especially if you've never been out there to drink. He, he doesn't necessarily come at you to do drugs. You know that's wrong. Yeah, that's right. You know it's wrong to cheat and steal. Yeah, right. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, say amen, everybody. Amen. Things out on the street, wrong. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wrong. He knows that's wrong. But what the devil would do, the devil will come to you to discourage you. See, the devil is trying to steal your job. Oh, yes. Because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So what he wants to do is steal your joy. Come on, y'all. Oh, yeah. He wants you to get to the point where you'll feel bad about yourself. So what does he do? He attacks, listen, he attacks our own. He attacks marriages. Come on, y'all. He wants to get in your house and turn you against your spouse. Amen. Come on, y'all. And, and sometimes uh, one one. Spouse may decide to just go in the other direction. And, and, and that's, that's tremendous trauma yeah. to have to deal with when the spouse no longer wants to be there. Come on, y'all. That's tremendous trauma when the children are misbehaving all the way to jail, gone to jail, child out there in the street. Oh, that's a tragedy. Come on, y'all. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Come on and say amen. Amen. It, 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 it does something with, especially if you are a person, you've worked all your life. You've always been able to take care of your bills. You've always been able to put food on the table, to take care of matters. But then you lose your job. And look, you can't find another job. You can't get out the hole that seems to you you are in and, 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 and when you get into that particular that predicament and, and, and got all that financial uh, trouble on you the, the creditors calling you you, 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 you got call ID you won't even answer the phone now yeah, but they ain't gonna stop they gonna keep calling you know? you start writing letters you, you, you don't feel good about yourself and you think about the fact the church told me that if I pay my tithes God will open the windows of heaven to and pour, me, pour out a blessing that I don't have room to receive. I've been paying my tithes. I, I've been giving to the building fund. I've I, I donated my time to the church. Somebody say amen. Amen. I, I've done what they told me to do, but look like I still can't make ends be. Uh, things are just still topsy-turvy in my house. Come on, y'all. Amen. Uh, the child is still misbehaving. The child is still in prison. Come on, say, say amen, amen. Somebody. The spouse still not coming around. And, and so the devil, amen, he starts dealing with us. Amen. He starts talking to us. What's the use? You might well stop. You might well just stop where you are. You might well just quit the church. You might well, amen. And what, what, what's the use in reading the Bible? Those words, those promises they've been telling you, the promise of God, amen, they're not for you. Amen. And he'll tell you that you're in a hole you can you cannot get out of. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on and say amen again. Amen. And so all this pressure, all this stress comes. It starts building up. It, 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 it looks like it's building up and, and something has got to give one way or the other. But can I say to you, and I, I don't want to be too long today, can I just say this? Don't let those tough days cause you to give up. Yes. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes. Don't let those tough days cause you 
to give up. I'm talking about to give up on God. Amen. To give up on his word. Lord, I thank you. To give up on your salvation. Don't give up. Come on, look at your name. Y'all hear me preach. I said, don't give up. Come on, tell him. Come on, say it again. Don't give up. Don't give up. Amen. Don't give up on your family member. Oh, pray the Lord. I talked about parents, amen. And sometimes, amen, when we look at our children, we know they're going in the wrong direction. We know, amen, if they keep going the path they're going, that destruction is coming their way. And this thing may happen. We just don't want to see them go through it. It breaks the heart. But I'm saying to you today, don't give up on your family member. Don't give up on your son or your daughter. Jesus is able to save. He's able to deliver. Why don't you lift your hand and tell him thank you. Come on and tell him thank you. I've had the other Earl Shannon preacher many times. But I don't think he's ever given his full testimony. But let me just share a little some things he told me. Elder Shannon came up in this church. Father was a superintendent. Mother was a darling mother in the church. They went to church when they didn't want to go to church. Had to be the youth quiet sunshine man. But when he got a little older, he got with the wrong boys. He said when he went to middle school, I got with the wrong folks. And they introduced me to the drugs. Come on and tell God.
The reason being the folk laugh at me. They mock at me. They always go to curse me the man that gave the tithes to the man child <coughs> was born. Yeah, right. Jeremiah, you can see from the words, was about to give up. Yes. Matter of fact, he said, I'm not going to make any mention of it anymore. I'm not going to preach no more. Yeah, right. Bill Oden said there was probably a space of time that he did not preach. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Oh, yes. And he started thinking about that thing. Oh, yes. Can't help us. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. It's a life. Shut up and Yes, sir. Glory to his name. Yes. The Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Will energize you. Oh, yes. The Holy Ghost. Yes. Will lift you up. Yes, sir. He'll lift you up out of your despondency. Preach, Pastor. Oh, my God. Out of your troubled yes. mind. Yes. Your troubled spirit. Yes. God knows how to renew your strength. He knows how to renew your mind. We just stand with I'm trying to be brief today because of all the things that we're going through or that we need to do today. Lord, I thank you. I know that God gave me this message with the subject, have you felt like giving up lately? Because if we would just tell the truth, all of us have felt like giving up before. Yeah. Are you saying that? Yeah. Now some situations were worse than others. The devil worked on the preaching. Yeah. It was a period of my life after we had built this edifice. Lord oh, was blessed. I was so despondent. Some things were going on. I'm not going to go into all the details, but we've talked about it before. My wife and I own the daycare center. Things were not going well. RS made a mistake and it was their fault. But we still had to pay. Amen. And it was their, their fault. And so my wife was coming home. And she hated to go to the daycare because she was really the director. And she was thinking about we ought to move, we ought to leave. I was going through this thing. We 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 not shared with one another. Going through that and then the, the stress of pastoring. Yeah. And I'm so glad I got, got folks that are praying for me. Amen. Pastors are committing suicide now, y'all. Amen. I was under a lot of burden teaching school, pastoring the church, and I really wanted Elder Gray to resign as pastor yes, sir. and move to Atlanta. I didn't say anything to my wife. She was thinking really long saying that, but I really had to say it. Just resign and the Lord wanted me to preach and pastor. Maybe he'll give me an opportunity there later on. But I wanted to give up. I wanted to give up. Thank you, Jesus. There are some things that happen in our life and we think about giving up. And I said some things can be worse with some people, it can be worse. Because I didn't think about giving up on God in the sense of backsliding. But sometimes people think about leaving the Lord. And have left the Lord because they're angry. Listen, there are people that are angry with God. Blame God for what has happened. He didn't answer my prayer. Lord, why am I suffering what I'm suffering? Why am I going through what I'm going through? Lord, why did you let me do this? And I didn't have time. I, I, I got some more in this message that I need to talk about. Because sometimes, let me just say this, I'm not going to hold, hold you much longer. Sometimes God is letting us go through some things to shape us, to mold us, to get us to start thinking. Sometimes God lets us go through things so all we can do is get on our knees and cry to the Lord. But then some people yet won't cry out to the Lord. Say amen, everybody. Amen. One writer said, that our troubles is like heat, the heat of an oven, stone. And you know when you're cooking something, if you're cooking pork in particular, pork got to be well done. If you take the pork out before it's well done and eat, you're going to be sick. Am I right about that, cooks? Amen. All right. Amen. And some of you are in the oven. The heat has been turned up. But I'm so glad that God got his eyes on the temperature again. Oh, yeah. And got his eyes on the clock. You trying to get out the door. And some of you have and gone on.
where you want to go. Amen. But if you stayed in there, the time God wants you to be, you'll come out golden brown. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. You'll come out ready for the master's use. And God is working on somebody here. You. We don't understand all what God is doing. We don't know why we go through what we go through. But if we can just put our hand in the hand of God and trust him. Yes, God, sir. Yes, sir. Everything yes. will be all right. Oh, yes. Have you felt like giving up?